Here we are, Lowdown fans, part two of the interview with Rochester Nighthawks forward Corey Vitarelli. Now I keep seeing these pitches of you kind of on the crease going horizontal, stretching out like Superman. Um, you've also picked up this nickname, Air Dogger. I'm wondering where that came from, and is this crease dive something that you've been working on? I don't know. I mean, obviously, that's it's. you could try practicing, and obviously I suggest people do, but it's something that just sort of happens in the, you know, in the pace of the game. Uh, as far as the nickname, you know, growing up, my name's always been Dog, nickname been Dog. So with the Air Dogger, obviously, it's, you know, the Gates made that famous kind of behind the back or jumping in the air. So Air mm-hmm. Gate, naturally, Air Dogger, obviously, was sort of the easy thing to say. And, you know, just got, you know, traveling in the car with Selfer and Labs and just guys in the team, we sort of joked about it. And then I know a couple fans sort of picked it up. So it's just kind of stuck around. Yeah, I think it's been super exciting seeing these guys flying and leaping through the air. And I'm wondering, uh, in your opinion, should the league maybe do something like pull the nets out another two uh, or three feet to allow um, you guys, you know, some more room to take off from behind the net? I like the way it is. I, I don't know if you necessarily need, you know, any more room. But, you know, I, you know, I agree with, with what you say. And, you know, it definitely brings a you know element of an excitement. And, you know, it kind of keeps the defense and, you know, even goalies kind of honest that, you know, you never really know, and I, you know, I, I like it, and, you know, I, I'm happy with the way the net and the crease is set up, and, I mean, obviously, if they change it, so be it, but I think probably goalies would be a bit upset if that were to maybe happen. Yeah, I think you're right. Being a goaltender is probably already hard enough. We've changed their pad measurements, the you know, the size of the net and, and everything like that, so uh, I just want to thank you for being my guest today, uh, Corey, and wish you, uh, you know, good health and continued success there in Rochester. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right, Vid. Talk to you soon. All right, buddy. See ya. This was the lowdown on the NLL for week six. I'm your host, Jesse Thomas, as always. Before we go, let's uh, kind of recap uh, the award winners for this week. A tough uh, tough week, really, if you're picking some awards, some huge play. Uh, as far as offensive player of the week goes, it could have been Curtis Dixon. You know, he had uh, three goals there in the fourth quarter uh, for a total of four in that tight victory over the Edmonton Rush, but uh, the NLL announces Cody Jamison was named the Offensive NLL Player of the Week. He had five goals, 11 assists for the Nighthawks as they improved to 3-3 three and three and uh, in tie for second place in the East Division. Now on the transition side of things, it was Tyler Haas, of course, of the Minnesota Swarm. He was the Transition Player of the Week. He had three goals, including the overtime game winner against the Rock. In total, they had eight transition goals that game. That's just a heavy transition team. In terms of Rookie of the Week uh, honors, that goes to Mitch McMichael of the Washington Stealth. He had two goals in that 13-6 victory over the Colorado Mammoth. This has been the lowdown on the NLL. As always, uh, enjoy the games this weekend. We'll catch up with you next week.